Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week we had a ton of updates for all of our Apple devices. There's news about Apple still working on a folding device, we still haven't had a WWDC invite, and much more. This is your news update for the week of April 4th, 2022. And the first thing is Apple updated Apple Fitness Plus. So if you use Apple Fitness Plus, they've sent you an email most likely, and it says power through your week, and they've added a bunch of workouts and a focus on fitness after having a baby. So you can go through here, you'll see over 25 new workouts to keep you moving and so on. So if you use Fitness Plus, you should see that update now. Now, Apple's supplier, TSMC, who makes the chipsets in many Apple devices, such as the A15 Bionic, has said that demand for smartphones is slowing. This doesn't just include Apple, but is also for Android phones. And of course, this could be due to uncertainties about what's going on around the world, as well as a saturation and small refinements and upgrades from year to year. So as iPhones and other phones get more and more mature, we get better and better cameras, there's going to be less and less updates. So they can differentiate themselves with services and maybe software, but at this point it looks like we've reached pretty much peak maturity until maybe the overall hardware advances to where we have much better cameras and things like that. So the overall demand of buying an expensive phone seems to have decreased. It may increase in the future, but right now it looks like it's slowing a little bit. Now, as far as the latest iPad, the fifth generation iPad Air, I've had quite a few people ask me if I have any creaking with it. This is the latest generation and it's the base model. I bought it myself, ordered it, it was shipped to me, and I haven't experienced any creaking. In fact, you can actually flex these if you just push a little bit. You don't want to do too much, but you can see it flex. You can do this with an iPad Pro, any of the previous versions that look like this. Because of their thinness, you can flex them. But in flexing them, you don't hear any creaking. I don't have any issues. When I push on the back, I don't feel anything different. It really is no different than the fourth generation for me, but I have heard from people that have seen this creaking issue and I'm curious if you're experiencing it as well. Maybe it was just manufactured on a different day and not as well. I haven't had any issues, but I did order this day one and again, it seems to be fine, but let me know if you're having that issue in the comments below. Now, many people have been waiting for YouTube to have picture in picture. They allow it through premium. So if you have a premium subscription, you can just play a video. This is my video from yesterday and you can have it in a little window with picture in picture. However, YouTube has actually updated YouTube TV to allow this across all the platforms on iPhone and iPad. So if you use YouTube TV, that should be updated now. Premium may switch to free in a little while, but right now it's currently YouTube premium. So hopefully they change that very soon, but I just wanted to make you aware if you weren't already. Now, many of you have asked me to include deals within these news updates. So I have two deals today that I was able to find. The first one has to do with the series seven Apple watch. The 41 millimeter is down to $329 for the base model or for the 45 millimeter, it's 359 on Amazon sold directly by Apple. So if you had a problem with it, you can bring it to Apple and they'll take a look at it. And also AirPods Pro with MagSafe are down to 174 on Amazon. So I'll leave a link to them in the description. They are affiliate links, so you can either click those. I'll get a small commission. If you don't want to use those, you can just search for them on Amazon as well. So pretty decent deals. Of course, Apple may be updating the AirPods Pro later this year, but the Series 7 Apple Watch is pretty current. Again, they'll probably update it sometime around September like they normally do every single year. But it's a pretty good deal at this point, at least for the aluminum version of the watch or aluminum, depending on where you live. Now, Apple has also updated its policies to allow reader apps to allow external links to their websites for account signups. So prior to this, they had to do everything within the app. So maybe Hulu or Netflix or things like that can now provide an external link to help you manage your account without going directly through the Apple systems or their app. So that's a change in their policies that's now active for developers if they want to do that. Apple has a service called Business Essentials that was currently only available in beta form, but this this past week, Apple updated this and made it available to any small business with less than 500 employees as a subscription. Business Essentials actually allows you to manage your company's devices with features such as setup, onboarding, iCloud storage, and Apple Care Plus. So you can see it here, and this is Apple's own website on how to add users, not work, onboarding, and so on. So it's a pretty nice service. If you want to use it, again, you can sign up. It's sort of like an iCloud subscription for businesses that allows you to manage all of this. And of course, you get support with Apple Care Plus and more. So it's a pretty nice service that was only in beta form before and is available to anyone now. Over the years, Apple has made a ton of products, and Apple will add three older MacBooks to its obsolete list at the end of April, according to an internal memo that Mac Rumors obtained. So if you have a Mac 
MacBook Air 11 inch from early 2014, a MacBook Air 13 inch from early 2014, or a MacBook Pro 13 inch from mid 2014. Those will all be obsoleted at the end of this month, meaning they're older devices, usually around seven years old, Apple will obsolete the device and you'll no longer get updates for it. Apple and other companies such as Meta and possibly additional companies recently gave information to hackers that had forged documents to make them look like they were coming from governments with emergency data requests. So these hackers would hand these documents to Apple saying we need information about different users and it looked like they were official requests from governments. This apparently was handed out. We don't know how many users or what data was handed out or who was affected specifically, but apparently this impacted Apple, Meta, and some other companies as well. We still haven't heard from Apple as far as WWDC. Typically, Apple will send out worldwide developer conference invites, usually at the end of the March, where we'll have an event in June. That's where they go over the next version of iOS and iPad OS and Mac OS and so on and show us all of the recent features. Typically it was an in-person event except for the last two years and the website's still active. So it was a virtual event the past couple of years for obvious reasons, but you can see all of the different information here. You can download the Apple developer app and see more there. Typically they'll detail new things such as iOS 16. So we're waiting for those invites. Maybe Apple's just holding off because they're having people come back to work in a hybrid situation very soon. And maybe they're just waiting for that to see if they're going to have it in person this year or not. But either way, we should see those invites very soon with an event typically in June, normally within the second week of June, we'll have an event usually around the sixth or seventh. And then we'll see all of those different versions and then we'll get our first beta such as iOS 16 beta one, Mac OS 13 beta one, iPad and so on with Apple watch and more. So maybe we'll get that along with maybe some new hardware with Mac pro, but we're waiting for those invites. I would expect them soon, but this is again, uncharted territory that we've been seeing lately with Apple. We don't know exactly when they're going to set them, send them out. Now this past week, we did have a bunch of updates for our iPhone. So iPad and iOS 15.4.1, as well as HomePod and TV OS 15.4.1, Mac OS 12.3.1 and watch OS 8.5.1. We had all of those updates, which were to patch some security issues and small bugs. But this coming week, I do expect iOS 15.5. Now, in the past or the past couple of weeks, we typically would see an update right after a public update, maybe the event in March, we would see another beta start right away. This year, we haven't seen that so far. And many people have said, is this the end of iOS 15? Are we going to see any more of this? And a lot of people were even speculating iOS 15 is done. Apple's focusing on iOS 16, and we're not going to see another update. However, based off a recent Twitter post by Apple software updates, it looks like Craig Federighi responded to this. So I wanted to share that with you. Now I did reach out directly to Apple software updates and ask where they got this email from. And they actually said they sent it directly. And then Craig responded to them. So he was asking about future iOS 15 updates. Craig responded saying, sure, there are more updates of iOS 15 in the works. No need to get impatient. Glad that you're looking forward to WWDC. Craig. So it looks like all of those things are pretty much confirmed at this point, since that's the head of software development or software at Apple, we should see iOS 15.5. Now the question is whether or not we see it this week or maybe next week or within the next few weeks. So maybe we'll see it as soon as tomorrow or Wednesday. We've been expecting that for the past few weeks, but again, we're in uncharted territory and it could be a few weeks from now. We just don't know at this point, but as soon as we see beta one, I'll be sure to let you know. Now with future iPhones, we have some additional news with iPhone 14. Now, some people were expecting this to be very soon. Typically we won't see iPhone 14 until September, but Apple is ramping up production now as they have to make millions and millions of these devices. So what they'll do is get the sort of overall design and specifications finalized, and then they'll start making them maybe in a month or two from now, or we could get closer to September or so, and they'll start creating them then. Either way, the overall design has been done for a while. It seems now in a recent post from Weibo, there was a user called Fishing8 who posted specifications for the upcoming iPhone 14 camera system. Many have said to expect a 48 megapixel sensor, maybe with 8K video, and it appears the sensor will be even larger than the current sensor by 21%. So this year we gained a larger sensor that allows more light. With a larger megapixel count, you would want to allow more light to be captured by the sensor, so a larger sensor 
also makes sense. So that seems to make a lot of sense. Hopefully we'll get some amazing images and video from it and we'll have to wait and see, but it looks like we're going to get that as well as a thicker camera bump based off the latest renders. So where some people said in the past it was going to be flat, it could be even thicker to accommodate the larger sensor. So again, we don't really know hundred percent the overall dimensions, but we should know pretty soon. For those of you looking forward to Apple adding a fingerprint under the display, it looks like that's not going to happen anytime soon. According to a recent post by Kuo Ming Chi, he said that we thought we could have one soon, but it appears there's no plans until at least 2024 or 2025, if ever. So to have one under the display that works really well. It looks like Apple sticking with face ID for now, especially if they can get rid of the notch, put it under the display with the recent technology with display. So it looks unlikely that we're going to get any sort of touch ID under the screen. I would love to see one on the side with the power sleep wake button though, just maybe for different use to have both would be great, but either way, it looks like it may not be anytime soon. Now, Apple is still working on folding devices. Recent patents have shown this, and Apple is apparently testing a folding device with a nine inch display, according to Ming-Chi Kuo. However, Apple is not set to introduce a public version of a folding device until at least 2025. So maybe an iPad that folds, maybe MacBooks are suspected at this point, or maybe a whole lineup of folding devices. The elect this week also said that Apple's working with LG to develop foldable displays for future iPads and notebooks. So we definitely could see some innovation in the future folding displays would be great on an iPad where you could have a phone, maybe where it scrolls into the device, like Samsung is planning something along those lines. But right now we just don't have any additional information about that other than that Apple's working on it. Also, we keep hearing more and more about an upcoming MacBook Air redesign. It seems every week we hear more from different people such as DigiTimes this week, Mark Gurman previously, and they all say the second half of 2022 is when we could see the new MacBook Air with new colors, a new redesign, and even the M2 processor. So it looks like all of those things are set for later this year instead of March, like many had suspected originally. So I do look forward to a MacBook Air redesign, but exactly what it has as far as the display, whether or not it's a white bezel or not, we don't really know a hundred percent, but it does look like it's planned for later this year. So again, usually around the November, October, November timeframe is when they release Macs. But if they do that this year, that's when I would expect it if it's in the second half. If not, it could be earlier as well. And Apple, of course, can always change this. So that's everything as far as this week's updates. If there's anything you'd like to see specifically in these weekly news updates, let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it's always linked in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.